This is one of the most elegant rose fragrances I've ever smelled. So let's review it now. Hey, what's going on? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel where I upload weekly fragrance content. So of course, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button down below if you also love fragrances and be sure to follow me over on my Instagram page. But today I'm bringing you yet again another Louis Vuitton review. I feel like I've reviewed almost every single Louis Vuitton at this point. But my newest one that I got in the collection is of course Les Sable Roses and I cannot wait to bring this review for you. If you are a rose lover, then you are absolutely in for a treat with this review because this is an absolute stunner. Now, Les Sable Roses, which I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, actually translates to the Pink Sands in French, which is a kind of a strange name when you think of this fragrance, but hey, Louis Vuitton knows what they're doing. So let's go with some information now. This was launched back in 2019. As far as the retail price, this is gonna run you $410 for the 100 ml. It is a little bit more expensive than the regular line Louis Vuittons, which retail for $320 because this is part of the Middle Eastern collection, which has a few others such as Fleur de Desert, Nuit de Faux, Ombre Nomad, of course, Les Sable Roses. They also have a very expensive line within the Middle Eastern line, which is called Pure Oud, which I've never smelled. And spoiler alert, guys, Louis Vuitton is actually launching Pure Santo and Pure Ombre very, very soon. But those are probably going to retail for like over $1,000 and they don't carry them around me. The concentration is an Eau de Parfum, which means it is obviously more concentrated than something like an Eau de Cologne or an Eau de Toilette, but slightly less than an Extrait de Parfum. And I wish Louis Vuitton made the Middle Eastern collection extraits, but they actually have an extrait collection, which goes for over $500. But still, it is pretty potent when it comes to the concentration. Perfumer is the man himself, the legend, Jacques Cavalier, one of my favorite perfumers, if not my favorite perfumer, hands down in the industry. Obviously, he's an in-house perfumer for Louis Vuitton. He also created my signature scent, which is Bulgari Tigar, and he created my first high-end purchase like years and years ago called Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather. So he's a master and has a huge resume. He barely ever misses when it comes to his creations. Now with all that information out of the way, let's look at the packaging and presentation you'll get with Les Sable Roses now. So of course, take a look at the box. If you've seen one Louis Vuitton box, you have basically seen every single one of them. The original boxes, of course, come in this almost like recycled looking paper box, which kind of looks like a tester box. It's not that pleasing to be honest with you. On top, you have like a barcode with your sticker as well as the bottom as well as a batch code to authenticate your product to see when it was produced. Nothing on the sides, on the back you do have some ingredients and this does open up. And inside the box you have your Louis Vuitton cylinder which looks very similar to the box. On top you have the black LV which means it's in the Middle Eastern collection and then your bottle is housed inside. Nothing so special about the presentation when it comes to the box. So let's look at the bottle now. Now, take a look at the bottle, which is a completely different story because I love the aesthetic of these Louis Vuitton bottles. Probably my favorite designer bottles in the game. Of course, this one has the black glass with almost like a pinkish red hue to the glass as well. Les Sable Roses in gold, Louis Vuitton embossed. On the bottom, you do have engraved your, all your information as well as a batch code. Nothing on the back. On top of this one, you have the gold LV because it's in the Middle Eastern collection. Nothing inside of the cap and nothing on the atomizer. And these are magnetic, so you can't pick it up by the cap and it is a very strong magnet. All in all, a beautiful presentation with the bottle. For the notes, you have rose, oud, saffron, ambergris, and black pepper. And this will be classified as a floral woody. So let's spray this and test out these LV atomizers. Very nice distribution on that. It sprays a ton of juice. So let's remind myself of La Saba Roses right now. Right away when you spray Les Sable Roses, you're going to be immediately greeted by this very natural, fresh rose. Now, Louis Vuitton's actually using two different roses in this fragrance, so they claim. And guys, this is primarily a rose dominant fragrance. Obviously, you would expect that from the name and it lives up to that name because trust me, the rose just absolutely takes over. And it's not a powdery rose, thank goodness, because when a rose in a fragrance starts to become a little bit too powdery for me, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. So thank goodness it's not powdery in here. It's rather kind of like dewy and wet, almost like roses have been like rained on. That's the kind of vibe I get from here, almost kind of like rose water as well. So 
beautiful natural smelling wet dewy rose right off the bat that is very very fresh and it's interesting because all the Louis Vuittons I own and have reviewed, they all kind of have this Louis Vuitton signature touch. It might even be Jack's signature touch where every single one of them almost has this kind of watery facet about it. And that's definitely dominant and prominent in Les Sable Roses from that wet kind of uh, watery rose. Just outstanding for any rose lover. This is actually Louis Vuitton's take on a rose oud fragrance. Not Ombre Nomad, which a lot of people think is a rose oud. It's not, it's more of like a fruity oud. This is their rose oud right here. Now, once it starts to transition into the mid, you're still getting the rose through and through. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. So don't worry if you love rose, but rather what starts to come in is this kind of spicy saffron note. And saffron rose go hand in hand together. A lot of times you'll see those kind of combos in a lot of fragrances, as well as obviously the oud being a rose oud fragrance, but the saffron comes across very spicy, still getting that rose in the mid. And if you didn't know, saffron is actually the most expensive spice in the world. So of course, this is going to smell very luxurious. Now, finally, when you get into the base is where it is a little bit disappointing to me. I'll be honest with you right off the bat because it starts to turn into this warm ambergris that's not really animalic or salty at all. It just kind of gives us warmth to the composition along with the oud. Now, obviously when I think of oud and probably when you think of oud, you probably think of like barnyardy, funky, earthy oud. And that's usually how it comes across and supposed to smell. And here rather, it's basically just a woody oud. No funk really at all, which is pretty disappointing to me. Like I said, I was hoping for a very good rose and like a funky oud going on, but you're not getting any of that in here. It's not the same kind of funky oud you get in even Ombre Nomad or even Nuit de Faux. It's a much more tamed and toed down oud. So if you're not a fan of oud, do not hesitate trying this one out because it's not gonna overpower the rose or even the saffron and ambergris. And for me, I think I would much rather enjoy this fragrance if the oud was like amped up even a little bit more than what it is in here, kind of to balance out the rose because like I said, the rose basically takes over the entire composition. It's like, I would say 80% rose and like 20% other notes going on. It's primarily a rose heavy fragrance through and through from the top, mid and base. And if you're wondering if this is similar to Ombre Nomad at all, it's not, trust me. Ombre Nomad is very fruity very powdery and very earthy and barnyardy from the oud. This is this very fresh, wet, dewy, rosy, a little bit spicy saffron, slightly warm ambergris and a pinch of oud. So not similar to Ombre Nomad at all. Out for the best seasons to wear less Saba roses if you decided to pick up a bottle. I would basically wear this in the spring because of the rose and the florals, as well as the fall and winter because of obviously the woodiness and the spiciness going on in here. Maybe even possibly like the summer, like evenings even because of the wet kind of floral touch in here. And it doesn't really turn like too glowing. It's not sweet, nothing like that. So, I mean, basically this is a pretty versatile fragrance, probably the most versatile in the Middle Eastern collection from Louis Vuitton even. Because it's not as daring as the other ones in the collection and can even be worn in the summer where Nuit de Faux and Ombre Nomad can never be worn in the summer from my opinion at least. Now, Fleur de Desert, I don't have much experience with. I'm gonna have to get a bottle of that one soon and review it as well. But from the ones I know, this is probably the most versatile in this line. Out for occasion, I would actually say this is a much more formal leaning fragrance. Of course, when you think of it, it's very elegant, very luxurious, very floral, which kind of leans towards the formal side rather than casual. This would be perfect like going to the office even, regardless of it being a slight oody fragrance, you can still pull it off around like the majority of people even in the office setting. That's how toned down and tame this is. But especially like even a wedding or a date night when you're dressing up, maybe going to a nice dinner in the evening, perfect guys. So definitely a formal attire kind of fragrance. Out for gender, this one is obviously targeted as unisex as the entire Middle Eastern collection is. However, this one is unisex leaning on the feminine side. It's not a masculine fragrance or anything like that. Kind of like Nuit de Faux, I would say it's very masculine, probably the most masculine 
Ombre Nomad is probably completely unisex. This one's unisex leaning feminine. And I think so is Fleur de Desert. So if you're a woman watching this one, I think this would absolutely be gorgeous on you. And if you're a man that loves roses, you can obviously rock this as well, especially if you like that rose ooh kind of combination in perfumery, which is kind of overplayed and overdone nowadays. However, it's not kind of your traditional rose ooh. This one is much more elegant. For age groups, this is without a doubt a mature leaning fragrance as well. Of course, kind of goes along with the formal attire and being a floral fragrance as well. It definitely is more mature rather than youthful. It's not a teenager fragrance at all. I personally kind of picture like an older woman kind of rocking this one, maybe 30s and up. That is a little bit wealthy, of course, has her life together. And same goes with the guys too, maybe like 30s and up. I think this is perfect. But of course, that doesn't mean if you are a little bit younger, you can't enjoy or appreciate Las Alba Roses. Of course you can. However, I just think this does lean more mature. Now, touching on the performance of Las Salva Roses, guys, this is without a doubt above average performance. When it comes to the longevity, when you apply this one, you're going to be stuck with it for at least 12 hours on skin even. This fragrance is not going anywhere anytime soon. And that's kind of the trend with the Middle Eastern line. All of them are basically beast mode fragrances from the three that I own and tested. These things do not lack performance, unlike some of the other Louis Vuittons, especially within like the California collection, which are below average, the majority of them. These are the complete opposite nuclear fragrances. And same goes with the projection. You're gonna get a very loud, almost room filling projection when you walk in somewhere. It's gonna easily project over six feet off of your skin for up to maybe around four hours or so. Very, very heavy. So you are at least getting your money's worth when it comes to the performance when you're buying a Louis Vuitton especially this one. That's gonna do it for my review of Les Salva Roses. Let me know down below if you actually had the chance to try this one and what is your favorite within the Middle Eastern collection from Louis Vuitton, I'm very curious. But besides that, leave a like, subscribe below if you haven't already, and of course, I'll catch all you guys here in my next upload. Take care, everybody.